Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at this, the Atomstack B1 enclosure and the machine inside, the A5 M50 Pro laser cutter. So I've been using them for the last kind of few weeks, trying a few different projects. I'm a bit of a beginner when it comes to laser cutters. I've not used one before. So you may find that some of the comments I make are already solved in other things, but I'm just trying to point out the problems that I had with this specific machine and my kind of getting started process. So the first thing I want to cover is safety. Yes, I know, boring, boring, boring. But with lasers, it's super important because like a small short second of incorrect use in an unsafe way can basically cause blindness or just very bad permanent eye damage. You do not want to take risks when it comes to eye safety with a laser. This is a class four laser, which means it is basically the most dangerous type, even if it's only five watts. Like don't let the low wattage fool you into thinking, oh, it'll be fine if I see it. It's really not. Even on reflection of any material back into your eyes, that's still enough to do permanent damage. Do not take risks with lasers. So the first thing I did upon getting this is acquire some laser safety glasses. These are from Laser Physics, which is a like a laser safety company in the UK. And these glasses are specifically designed to work with the wavelengths of this machine. So you'll notice it has a kind of orange tint. These are designed to remove nearly all of the light. The reason you don't want to remove all of the light from the laser is because you still want it to be visible enough to know that it's on or off. Because if it looks off and you go, oh, now it's safe to take off the safety glasses and it's not, well, then you're screwed. Now, let's take a look at the machine a little bit closer to understand why I went with some proper laser safety glasses. It's a completely open laser. There's no default safety equipment pretty much at all. The laser module itself has this very small red shroud around it, but it's really not enough. There aren't really any other safety features with this machine, so it is a bit of a risk. So I personally wouldn't recommend it without at least an enclosure like this one. Controlling the machine is done in one of two ways, either via a USB cable to a computer, like a laptop or something, or you can use the TF card, the micro USB card, which you can slot in the top here. And then you have the wireless, it's not really wireless, is it? A wired display to select what you wanna do. The display functionality is very, very basic. You can't do moves or frames or anything like that. It's literally just, you can set a print to go and that's basically it. In terms of build quality of the machine, it's reasonably okay. It's pretty basic. The design is really not optimal. This whole thing takes a, like a lot more space than it kind of really should. Uh, the wheels and stuff will wear out over time, so you will need to replace them. But the basic functionality is okay. It is a lot of aluminium, which is reasonably durable, and it's all well coated, so it's not gonna corrode or anything like that. When it comes down to doing some actual laser cutting, you've got a five watt laser, which is not a lot of power, so you're not gonna be able to like cut through thick metals and things like that. But for doing very simple uh, cutting on paper or engraving of wood, you are able to do that, but there are some troubles with achieving consistent quality. One of the biggest troubles I came across when dealing with this machine is that there's no way to compensate for materials that are not flat. Maybe there's a way that people with lasers deal with that, but I was expecting something on the machine to be able to deal with it. On 3D printers, we typically have some sort of um, measurement system for compensating for a bed that's not flat. If there was some system on here to be able to measure how bent or warped a material is, then you can adjust the laser height as you move to ensure consistent distance from the laser to the focal point so that the focal point is in the part of the material that you need it. The reason this is important is because that focal point is where you're gonna get the best effect from the laser. With the machine, you do get a small PDF which has some examples of laser speeds and power that you can use for different operations, whether you want to try engraving or cutting. I found them to be reasonably close to the materials that I had, although I didn't have the same materials, so I did have to adjust them a bit. They do get you kind of started with some sort of idea of the kind of area or ballpark that you want to be aiming for. The machine though doesn't actually come with any software. Nothing is included, and so you either have to just start a trial and use that for 30 days and then get rid of the machine, which makes no sense, or you're gonna to need to invest in some appropriate software. So I went with Lightburn, so that license for me was about 51 pounds, which is not too expensive, but when you're kind of getting new to laser cutting, it might seem like quite a big price. 
I did find it quite difficult to use, but then I've not used it a lot. I don't have much experience with laser cutting. So for those that are more experienced or have spent quite a bit of time with it, I've heard it's a pretty decent piece of software. Moving on to the enclosure, it is of reasonable build quality. It's not super sturdy, but once it's on a desk, it's pretty solid. It's not gonna go anywhere, that's for sure. And the fact that it is mostly metal, steel, folded sheet steel, is gonna be fairly fireproof as well, although I don't encourage trying to make a fire inside. It does have some big downsides though. Firstly, there's no switch on the lid. So if you were to open this while printing, it's just gonna continue cutting. Like the laser won't turn off when you open the lid, which really it should. It needs an end stop by the lid, so when the lid is down, it can print. As soon as it gets raised, it should stop, halt, emergency stop, all of that kind of stuff. And it doesn't. The next problem is the ventilation on the side. While it's fine, it's needed to have ventilation, it does give you a direct line of sight by eye to the laser. Not ideal. It kind of reduces the effectiveness of said protection. The third thing is that you'll notice that this protection is green. The laser glasses that I had were orange. So is this really the right color and right style of material to be blocking the adequate amount of laser power? I don't know. I can't be 100% certain, but to me, it seems like this should be the same material as the glasses. I don't know why it isn't. In terms of some good things, the machine does fit really nicely inside. It has specific brackets in the right place to be able to securely hold it down to the machine. So when it's inside, obviously the gantry moves, but the machine is like firmly bolted to the frame. In the back, you have a fan and a light. So you can see at the moment those are switched on and it comes with a little switch to be able to turn them on and off at will. That fan includes a duct. So there's one ducted to the fan at the back, but you will need another one, which I 3D printed, in order to attach it to some sort of panel to ventilate out of a window outside. So in terms of recommendations, at the moment, I don't really recommend this machine in its current state. It's one of the better ones out there in terms of having an enclosure designed specifically for it, but it's not included as part of the base model. So it's kind of implied that you don't need it, which trust me, you do. The laser itself has performed pretty kind of adequately and where the materials were flat, it was able to do exactly as expected, but there is no way to like secure materials and as I mentioned, compensating for things that aren't flat. And in those instances, the machine does tend to suffer a little bit. If you are willing to make the modifications to make this safer, such as an end stop switch for this, appropriate color plastic for protecting your eyes and some sort of additional protection so you can't see through the sides, then this is starting to look like a reasonably good machine. So while I can't recommend it in its current form, if you want to do a bunch of upgrades to improve the safety, it's not a bad start.